look at example seven and eight. Example seven has to do with unbounded behavior. Example eight has to do with oscillating behavior. And then we're going to look at conditions under which limits do not exist. So we're going to discuss the existence of the limit, um, this limit here, limit as x approaches zero of one over x squared. So notice if we plugged in zero here, we are going to get one over zero. And so let's go ahead and graph this see kind of what's going on here. Now, if I, I know that number one, that it's not going to hit zero, right? You can't plug in zero here. So let's just choose some other numbers. So let's choose one. If we plug in a one, what are we going to get? If we plug in one here, we're going to get one over one squared, which is just one. If we plug in two, so one over two squared, that's going to be one over four. So we plug in two, we get a fourth. Then we go one over, let's say three squared, notice that's one over nine. So it's gonna approach that X axis. Now, if we plugged in a number, let's say a half, so one over one half squared, notice that's gonna be one over one fourth or four. So it's gonna be all the way up here. So notice this is really what's happening on the right side. Now on the left side, if I plugged in negative one squared, I'm gonna get one again. If I plug in the same thing, one over negative two squared, it's always gonna be positive. So this is gonna be a fourth. And then same thing, if we plugged in a half, we are gonna get a positive four here. So it's a mirror image that goes this way. So here's the graph. So just to kind of talk about this, um, just conceptually, notice that from the left side, this function is, as it approaches zero, it's approaching infinity. It is unbounded. If we approach zero from the left, it is also unbounded. So when that happens, the limit does not exist. Okay, so just kind of getting a general idea of this. Um, and of course, there's ways to prove it as well. Now let's take a look at oscillating behavior. Discuss the existence of the limit as x approaches zero of sine of one over x. So if you tried to graph this, number one, I'm gonna show you what the graph looks like. This is what the graph looks like if you tried to plug it in. So notice that it is oscillating continually between positive one and negative one. And it keeps on going back and forth, back and forth. Now, if we tried to plug in some numbers, so notice that x is in the denominator. So let's just say we did sine of one over, let's say two over five pi. It does tell us the answer is one. It's because you're gonna have to flip it five pi over two, right? So sine of five pi over two is going to be a positive one. Then you plug in sine of one over two over three pi. We're really looking at sine of three pi over two, and you know that is negative one. So these numbers here, it's going to oscillate between 1 and negative 1. So no matter how close you are to 0, it is possible to choose values of the x1 and x2 so that it just keeps on oscillating back and forth, and therefore this limit does not exist. So let's just kind of talk about, or just look at this box here. It says example 6, 7, and 8 show three of the most common types of behavior associated with the non-existence of a limit. So conditions under which limits do not exist. The limit of f of x as x approaches c does not exist when any of the conditions listed below are true. f of x approaches a different number from the right side of c than it approaches from the left side of c. So we saw that in the example with our piecewise function, for example, um, where it was one on one side and negative one on the other side, do, do not approach the same number. For number seven, f of x increases or decreases without bound. So here it increases without bound here to the left and to the right, right? So it's not approaching a single value of c, so therefore the limit does not exist. And then number three, if f of x oscillates between two fixed values as x approaches c, so it's oscillating, um, our example number eight, it's oscillating between one and negative one, the limit also does not exist for that one. Okay, so hopefully that kind of helps you out. It's just kind of like some general information about um, when limits do not exist.